Hello the internet. And welcome back to another video of Ok1 and Jarity108. Wait, what? 3D Creeper. Yeah. And just saying this video is going to contain spoilers for the 15th anniversary of Doctor Who, Day of the Doctor. Though if you like the show, you probably should have already seen it by now. And plus, you should be expecting this from us if you've been watching this series of videos by now. If you haven't, go and do it now! Only if you feel like it, I really don't care. Yep. So yeah, th th this is the show where we review every single episode of Doctor Who, and we're making a special episode for the 50th anniversary, which yes. was y yesterday, like, at the time of recording yes. this, and hopefully will be up in about Tuesday our time, Ish. which is English time. It might time. be Wednesday, or maybe even Monday for a uh, probably be, probably be Tuesday, probably be Tuesday. There so, is only about there's about four or five hours difference between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's Eight, get six. so More. let's get on with the review of the day of the Doctor. Um, let's first talk about uh this episode being screened in so many different ways. You could see this episode normally like a normal Doctor Who episode, or you could see it in the theater in 3D or 2D, which I thought was a great idea, and I thought they pulled it off quite well. We each had a different. Thing that we did. I had pizza and crisps and watched in front of the TV. I had jelly babies. And he went to see it in 3D at the cinema. Did you enjoy it in 3D? Uh, I didn't notice the 3D that much, actually. Like, to be honest, there were only a few moments where I noticed it, really, but, like, for the most part, it was really cool. What about that in- what about the t what about the, um, credits where the faces of all the Doctors just came flying at you? Just like, oh uh, yeah, that was whoa. that was a bit that, that I noticed it a bit then, but that was so good. Also, I'm not, I don't think you got this because my mum watched it on her television as well, and she said that she didn't get. But in the cinema, we had Strax tell us about cinema rules. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> and how the Sontarans can pay maximum attention, uh, and that apparently you you're going to get killed if you uh, don't switch off your mobile phone. Uh, that's awesome. It's actually quite funny. We had some uh, technical difficulties as well in the cinema where the colour kept getting inverted. Really? But they fixed it. They fixed it. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <gasps> yes, yes, it is. But what overall did you think of the episode? Just before we kind of think, go all in depth. What overall, did you think? Overall, um. It was good. It was pretty good. It was. It, it, it certainly was... wasn't any kind of disappointment. I don't think it didn't disappoint me it in did, any way. It didn't live up to the hype, in my opinion, because it did get hyped a little, a little bit too much. Well, I think when when it's a show that's been running for fifty years, it's going to get lots of hype, and I think it's probably. I I ne I never expected it to live up fully to the hype. I mean, I. Thoroughly enjoyed it watching it in 3D, munching on my jelly babies. Um, I, uh, personally, I, I I don't have anything against 3D except if it's cinema 3D because I hate having to wear glasses to watch a film. So we had to buy our glasses, but we took them home, which means that we can use them again and again and again. What kind of 3D was it? Like the was it the coloured 3D? Like the no, it wasn't coloured 3D. Okay, okay. But I like I, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode and It was a I, good episode, but it just it I didn't... came out of it more excited for the next series of Doctor Who than I think I've been in quite a long time. Mm, I'm not excited still. Again But I did I did like um I did like it. It was a good episode overall, but it didn't live up to the hype and it could have lived up to the hype. Um In what way do you think it could have lived up to the hype? What do you think it could have done? More Zygon! Yeah, the Zygon storyline didn't really go. Okay, what happened with the Zygon storyline is there's some Zygons. They got turned, they got put into a painting to attack the humans, and then they become three people that uh, that work at the facility. And then the three people at the uh, facility come in and go, "Hey, we're Zygons, and we're not Zygons." And then the Doctor, well, three of the Doctors, m make their minds think that. 
not know if they're Zygon or human. And that's the end. Well, I don't... They left the Zygons and you, the unit people negotiating... I don't know what they were actually negotiating about. Well, but... no, to to about like the planet being as I got home base and stuff like that. I guess. Yeah. Like... So I think that's probably going to be in a future episode. They're going to explain how the resolution ended, or it's just going to be the storyline's just going to end in another episode at some point. Personally, I think they could have done more with the Zygons. I love the Zygons, and that transformation sequence in there was great. Yeah. They did a very good job. They did a very good job at the special effects and that. And especially, actually, all the special effects in this episode were very, very well handled. There weren't there weren't as many special effects as I thought. Actually, the the I think the most special effects was the bit where you could see all the Dalek spaceships fire, firing on Gallifrey. But uh, mm -hmm. I think that was the most special effects there were in the entire episode. But there were like little things, like again the transformation from the Zygon, that yeah. sort of stuff. Um. You know what? Uh, you know what I liked the paintings. The, uh, yeah, that was a cool idea. I like the three D. I love the three D painting. It just looks uh, the effect on it just looked amazing. Yeah, quite. Realistic. Especially when you saw the paintings from the side, and you could kind of see more of the Whoa. painting than Whoa. usual. It it was it was really good actually. And um, what what did you think about the doctors interacting? Personally, I really loved. Matt Smith and David Kent interacting. I thought that they had really, really good kind of interaction between the two Doctors. I thought they worked very well together. Hmm. I would have to agree. But. I There's really wish that they left a little, a little bit more time in the old England. Because that was definitely, in, personally, my favourite segment. Gave me the most laughs and... The yes, the bit with the rabbit was hilarious. I thought it was actually really funny. I am the doctor. I am the oncoming storm. And you're just a bit with a rabbit. <laughs> also, also the horse being the Zygon. I did actually yeah. see that. I saw that coming, but that was really good. Um, I, d I didn't see it coming. Uh, I saw it coming because the horse was in the background of all the scenes before yeah. that. It's just like, hmm, now he's talking about a Zygon, a shape-shifting monster. That horse is still in the background. Hmm. The horse. And then I, I just see the Zygon where the horse was. Uh, the, bit, the, the bit at the beginning, um, when the first, the first, they use after they used the original 1963 title sequence, uh, that and then cool. they, it basically recreated the first ever scene from Doctor Who. I thought that was really cool. It was a really nice nod back to. The old Doctor Who. There was quite a lot of nods, actually, back to old Doctor Who. Also, uh, again, as we said at the beginning, big spoilers here in this thing, but even more Doctors than we expected in this episode by yeah. by yeah. one. By the one. fan favorite Doctor is in this episode. Actually, no. IGN did a um a poll about wh whose favourite the Doctor was, and I think David Tennant was first, Matt Smith was second, Christopher Eccleston was third, and then uh, Tom Baker was fourth. But most of the vi most of the people that voted were probably American, and they only... Uh, Simon, here's the thing. We're talking about IGN. Don't talk about IGN. Why? IGN is not a good place. It's a very bad place. They Why? do not good... They do not good do good reviews or anything like that. You should not talk about the GN of I. I actually like my GN. But they're wrong. It is probably the most fan favourite Doctor Who of at least, yeah. being, uh, at least the me big fan crowd. Yeah. Uh, um, do you watch the Warp Zone? The Warp Zone? No. They did a, like, an... Uh, actually, wait, do they do lots of, like, music videos and rap things? Um, uh, not that many. I don't... Not that many. It's mainly just gaming, but they did for the special a hundred, uh, a, I just wanted to pl I kind of just want to plug this because it's so awesome. They did, like, an acapella style of- Oh, episode. yes, no, I s I've seen that. That's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put that in the description, but it's just so cool, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Uh, dressing up as the Doctor's so cool. But, also, yeah. what did you think about the John Hurt Doctor? John Hurt Doctor, technically not a Doctor, uh, I liked it. I, I like well, it. by the no, by the end of the episode, the doctors had acknowledged him as a doctor. But I he, think David Tennant's doctors, because of the timelines, 
we completely forgot about what just happened. Um, which is why he doesn't know who he's going to regenerate into when he comes to regenerate. Uh, and I'm not sure whether Matt Smith has forgotten or not. I assume not. However, just for the, just for the sake of the Doctor's numbering system not being messed up, I assume... That... No, he is technically counted... He is not technically counted as a Doctor, because the Doctor is counted as a transformation of the main... of the... Um, who was the original Doctor? I forgot his name. Jim Hartnell. Uh, a transformation of the William Hartnell Doctor through the normal means. Because he transformed via a drink and not the normal means, oh, yes. he is yeah. not ca technically counted as a Doctor. He's more of a Doctor and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Also known as the War Doctor. I like his screwdriver. I actually... Yes, yeah, that's, that's cool. It's probably my favourite screwdriver, weirdly. Mm. Have I hope they make a toy. They probably will. Um... Have we had a red screwdriver before? Well, there was the red setting on River Song Sonic screwdriver. That doesn't count. And the classic series Sonic screwdrivers didn't have a light, so no. Well, we have a red one now. I think so we have this Sonic screwdriver is going to be yellow. Next one's going to be yellow. And or purple. Gonna, and then it's going to be purple. And then it's going to be brown. And then it's going to be or orange. And then it's going to be white and black, like halved to, to symbolize evil and good. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know. It's going to turn into a yin yang symbol at some point, probably. But never mind. I like. Oh, did you like the bits where the John Hurt Doctor commented on uh, things like wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, and why do you have to flap your hands in the air all the time when you speak? Well, I liked it when all of the Doctors compared each other. It was quite. Yeah, nice. that was cool. I kind of wish um, Matt Smith did that a bit more. But I know that yeah. he he can't do it that much because he knew uh, he he was them all the time, but. Looking yeah. back at them, just like he is the he is. He commented on David Tennant's shoes, sand shoes. Yes, sand shoes. He is the oldest Doctor, and 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 it's kind of weird that the oldest Doctor is the most childish out of the three. Yeah. And I like that. I like that. Um. What, what did you think about Billy Piper being in it? Because no! obviously we're ah! not allowed. We're not ah! allowed to call her. We're ah! not allowed to call her Rose. Ah! Oh. Because uh, actually, Rose, and why are you screaming? No. Oh my god. The Rose subplot was ages ago. You do not need to bring it back. BBC. It wasn't actually Rose, though. It was. Heck, it, it was a. No, it was the. It was the inter. It was the. I think I know what it is. Of the, it was the embodiment of the interface of the moment. It was embodiment of a, the interface, yes, but it was it was taking, and it just took the, it taking was... a shape of a somebody that the Doctor knows from his past or, or future. Why Rose? Why not like Amy or something? Because that's recent. Not go go to the beginning and pick the worst one ever. No, it's well, like... because lots of people like Rose and Billy Piper's a good actress. No, she Personally, doesn't. I think the interactions between Billy Piper and uh, John Hurt were some of the best. Like, not some of the better scenes, necessarily, but some of the better dialogue, maybe. Not... I, I don't know, I just think that they're, that John Hurt and Billy Piper are two very good actress, actress, I, actor, actor and actress. Fair, so, I don't, I, do, I don't like Billy Piper as an actress. She's quite bland, in my opinion. So, yeah, I wish they picked someone else, but... Mm. It's. I can understand. It is um, probably the fan favorite. Compared there is to... lots of fan service in this episode. I think. I wish there was a little bit less of that and more just like get on with the plot. Well, I think that it was bound to happen because. Uh... I know it was bound to happen, Simon. Yeah, blah, 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 but I wish they had a bit more of plot and all that stuff. I think this episode was more about retrospecting on past Doctor. Yeah, Riffs, but they were doing... talking yeah, about. And then kind of setting up what's going to come next in the show. Why didn't they make a clip show episode then? What do you mean? Well, in some shows, mainly ki kid shows, but you can also get them in um, other shows, they do sometimes to celebrate a milestone like 100th episode or blah, 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 numbers, numbers, words, words, cheese, monkeys, you know what I mean. Sandwich! Sandwich. But yeah, um, yeah to celebrate that sort of stuff, instead of doing a big... Thing, they do a clip show where uh, not many fans like this, but they like seeing the old characters, see uh, the old characters and the new characters 
well, not interact because it's like clips from the old show and the new characters watching them. That's about it. I like I'm, it. Not, I'm not sure I would have liked that because I, I would have liked it, but uh, I understand that they wanted to give something great and ginormous. But I wish they focused a bit more on plots than just like, hmm, fun service. I st I still think I can't it, uh... I can't believe like da why didn't David Tennant like take his shirt off? That would be perfect fan service there. What? Fan service. Why was it? Fan why would it be fan service? service? <laughs> why is that fan service? For all the lady fans out there. Okay, but it would have made no sense at all. I don't know. Pushing the door down or something. Oh no. But it, they, they 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 keep going with the fan service. So why not take it to the extreme? Super what? fan service. Well. Super fan service man. That sounds like a superhero. Super, super fan, fan service man. Mm. Why don't you just bring all the old enemies back? Let's bring the Ice Warriors, the Candy Man. Okay, no, not the Candy Man. Yes, the Candy Man. I want the Candy Man back. No Candy Man. Yes, Candy Man. I'm the only person on Earth that actually liked that episode. No, no. That was actually a really good episode, and I don't I've see. I've watched it, but I just don't think that the Candy Man, for one, it's a stupid name. Well, no, he's made of candy. It, it, it's made of candy. It makes sense. How about you just eat him? No, it's not. It's not edible candy, Simon. It's robotic-looking candy. I think. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, why didn't they bring? Well, Queen Elizabeth. Uh... And that seems a little bit like random i like yeah. that it was clean in queen elizabeth the first yes because it's just like yeah time travel <laughs> the bit with the fez was actually very clever yeah the bit where they uh threw the fez through and i still i'm not 100 percent sure what the vortex was uh well it was like the the conscious the interface ripped a hole through space and time and then the other side was basically she was made well the interface not necessarily a she because it's a the, she, the, inter the interface is genderless um rose let's just say rose whatever whatever they ripped a hole in space and time so that john kurt could see what his future future selves would be and what they would be like Meh. Well, why why not his next incarnation as well? What do you mean? Why not the Doctor number nine? Because Christopher Eccleston didn't want to be in it. But he would be the next Inkin. Wouldn't he be a bit more sense than the next next Inkin? Mm. Well, we they couldn't have exactly thought of Christopher Eccleston to do the scene. Well, they they used the picture of him in the end of it. Why didn't they just have that picture like float around the whole thing, just in the what? same pose, just in the same pose, and like a robotic mouth movement? Perfect. Or maybe no. a puppet that would work. A puppet, Christopher Eccleston. No. It could have been an accident with the time stream or something. He's a puppet for the episode. Da 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 da. da. No. It's the Muppets with Doctor Who. No! That would actually be a really cool crossover. It's the Muppet Show with our special guest, the Doctor. No! <laughs> well, let's, let's, just, let's just leave it at no. Alright, and move on. If you say so. Also, the end bit with the freezing the planet. That was cool. Yes, yes, it was. That was cool. Um, seeing and you had one shot of Peter Capaldi, a eye shot. Dun dun dun. Ah, uh, don't look at him in the eyes. He's a weeping angel. Well, you know, you know the bit with the statues where they had all the the Zygons hiding where the statues were. Yeah. For some strange, for one moment, I was like, please don't be weeping angels. Please don't be weeping angels. Because right. even though Weeping Angels are an iconic monster now for Doctor Who, I I pretty much think the Weeping Angels, even though they're probably going to come back at some point. Uh, Simon, even... they were in the trailer for the Christmas special. There's been a trailer for the Christmas special. It was at the end of the episode. Well, I didn't. We didn't see it in the cinema. Did you stay till the end? 
Yes, I sort of stood to the end of the credits and the lights turned on and I was like, there's not more. Well, can I just I say... I was expecting an after credit scene. Well, here's the thing, Simon. Daleks, Cybermen, Silence and Weeping Angels. Oh no, I saw I saw that teaser trailer thing. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. yeah. On trend, oh, yeah. on trends, your law. Christmas, two thousand thirteen. I want it now. I don't want it now. It doesn't look good. Hey, it'll be uh, tomorrow. It'll be a month to Christmas, or whatever holiday people said celebrate on the twenty fifth. You know what I mean. Christmas, and I don't actually know any others. Um. Oops. Look it up on the internet, 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 internet. Okay. Um. How do you think about the sporting cast? Sporting cast. Um. Let's go over them, like, one by one. We've one talked... by one. Okay, uh, we've already talked a bit about uh, Queen Liz, but yes. she was okay. She was... Yeah, she was alright. She was alright. Uh, what about the... Sci- what about the... Uh, re- uh, I think the... Uh, one of the only returning casts from another episode. Oh, yes, the uh, Brigadier's daughter. Brigadier's daughter. Does she have an official name? I can't remember. Yes, she does. Kate. Lef- Lefrich. Lefrich. Yeah. Well, yes, but um, that... Was I? I like I like her as the Brigadier's daughter. Yeah, I, I like her. Uh, her performance is good. Yeah, very good. And it's nice to see that the characters in Doctor Who actually have a family at all, other than like mum, dad, grandpa, yeah. granddad, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Isn't that right? Every companion ever. Uh, what about the sci- a couple of scientists? One was just there, the bloke one. He was, oh yes, the guy. That he was took just the like, pic- hmm. Let's go look at the samples. Oh no, I'm being attacked by a guy, and now I'm being tied up in weird squid-like stuff. Oh dear. No, the guy that got the the person that got the only person that actually got tied up was Kate Lethbridge. No, too. Simon, if you look next to him, he's next to it. He's, oh really? He's oh next fine. To her. What did you think about the girl with the scarf? Uh, I like the scarf. Uh, the scarf makes it happy. Yes, the scarf is cool. Yeah. She uh, was kind of only there to realise the, the Zygons and to be another person that could be... I did like the idea that somebody at Unit, like, is a fan of the Doctor, really. Yeah. It's like a real, uh, uh, their universe. And then those bits where she it's gets... It's an actual Whovian in the show. And then when... That's uh, kind of weird, and then isn't it? Whenever she gets attacked, she just goes, the Doctor will save me, the Doctor will save me, the Doctor will save me. But that, that's that's uh, that's it's an actual Whovian in the show. That's weird. Yes, that that's, cool. that's cool. I like that. Ow. Um. Still, what did you think about the bits on Gallifrey, or at least uh, the the sections where we saw the people of Gallifrey? Um. Eh. They were cool. One thing I didn't really understand. I did understand... like the special effects. The special effects in those scenes were very good. No, they they were good. And, and John like... Hurt, and John Hurt's just crashing into Daleks with this TARDIS. Awesome. Yes. Also, I like the little touches of the uh, TARDIS is not having the little um, symbol that they added for the Eleventh Doctor. I can't. Oh, St. John's Ambulance. Yeah, so. I like that. I like the little touches of that. Um, well, the first Doctor's TARDIS had the St. John's Ambulance. Yeah, I know, I know, but they I like the touch that they didn't add it to those two. And I think it got taken away it. when the third Doctor... I just went, hey, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, and then it reappeared when Matt Smith got his TARDIS. Yay. Um, and I like the, the fact that John Hurt's TARDIS seemed to be quite a bit more damaged than... Uh... I just like that he crashed into Daleks. Also, did you notice that one Dalek was just, like, no legs? Oh, oh yeah, that was hilarious to me. Just like, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs exploding. Um, what did you think about the John Hurt TARDIS? The uh... it's just like the older TARDIS, really. So mm. I like it's that they the show... mix between the really old TARDIS and uh, David Tennant. Yeah, I like that they showed all of the TARDISes. 
at, uh, not all of them, the uh, three TARDISes in one TARDIS. I like that. I, I don't yeah. know why, but and the was, bit where David Tennant was like, "Oh, the round things." The round things. What were the know round what things for? Things do no idea. Oh, yeah, but I love the round. Things. That's really cool that the Doctor Adds actually doesn't know what most of the stuff does. It's round things. What are round things going to do other than be round? Also, just saying, why isn't this episode on iPlayer for all time, but Night of the Doctor is all time? The, the Night of the Doctor's there, they like, one year left to watch the 50th anniversary. Seven days. It says six days for me. Well, it said six days last time I checked. Yeah, so it's just... It's just... <sighs> it, also, why do they have a listing for 3D and 2D, and you can both watch them on iPlayer? You can't watch this sort of thing on 3D on my my kind of computer. You need a special kind of computer. You need a 3D screen computer. Yay! 3DS computer. <laughs> but yeah, um... Have we said all we need to say? No, we have not. Okay. There is much more to say. Also, I like John Hurt's hair. His hair yes. was nice looking. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I think. Do you, is there anything else you liked about the episode? Um, the one thing stuff? I didn't like, like is a very minute thing. Is the um, are the two names for the painting thing? Two names for the painting. Well, well, actually, that's all one name, isn't it? In the end. Yeah, I know, but they they made it sound like two names for the painting, and they were both sad. For two doctors, but no, Matt Smith gets to hear the happy one. And it's just I don't like I don't like it because it's just give the well, other two. Ten would have forgotten everything that happened there anyway. Yeah, so yeah, but who cares about that? It'll be just a list. It'll be nice. Well, they both would have forgotten, but it would be nice for just of them to go. Yeah, we did it. It is only a small. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> It is only a small nitpick, but I kind of agree with you. Other small nitpicks, I think I have three small nitpicks, not including that one. Um, one, John Hurt regenerated for no reason, which Jared seems to have come up with a reason for. There's, but, a, uh, there's a simple reason for it. He was uh, he was only meant to be for the for the time war. He was picked as a warrior. Actually, maybe he chose to regenerate for a specific. For, Specifically for the time war, and maybe he did choose to regenerate because he, you got to admit it was a slow regeneration. Yeah. And usually regeneration is just like a creep. Well, creep. Just, but this Christopher, time just like, Christopher Eccleston's regeneration was quick, and most of the other regenerations were quick. The only long drawn out one was David Tennant's. Yeah, but uh, but uh, a forced regeneration would be slower because you don't want to go, do you? Even if you're forcing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you had another nitpick that I worked out? Yes. Um, now, well, two nitpicks, and this is the, what I'm going to say one first. Now, the, the, the reason that they could end up opening the door, or at least the door that they thought was locked, was that the sonic screwdriver started working out the calculation for the door when john hurt had the sonic screwdriver and it just changed and they just changed the case for david Tennant's screwdriver which is all well and good but if you remember in the 11th hour the 10th doctor sonic screwdriver got completely destroyed uh and if you listen closely matt smith says when the tardis gives him a new screwdriver Ah, a new one, implying that that sonic screwdriver is different, therefore the calculation would never have been finished. Well, it is different, the outer shell is different, and that means a new one. Simple. No, but the doctor... Like, if I get, let's say I had a normal PC and not a laptop, uh, but I wanted to get a new screen for it, then I'd say new one, because it's a new and... screen, but it's still technically the same thing if I'm using the same computer. Yes. However, you never see Matt Smith pick up the remains of David Tennant's Sonic Screwdriver and put it in no, his pocket. No, well, actually, no, he does at some point. You yeah, know. but he changes his clothes and he just throws the old clothes away and puts the new he ones could, on. He could have easily moved it to the pocket during the sequence that we didn't see of him changing clothes. We did not see that sequence. Not all of it, anyway. Well, we saw him, like, do the normal stuff, like take off his jacket and that sort of thing, but... 
That was so it. It's, it's a minor technicality, but I still depending depending upon how you look at it, the, it wouldn't it may or may not have worked. But the door ended up the fact that it wasn't locked at all in the first place. So yeah, the door. So it didn't matter in the end. But never mind. Also, when the three doctors turned around and used their sonic screwdrivers to destroy the Dalek, I found that a little strange because the doctors never usually able to destroy stuff with his sonic screwdriver. There's three of them though. Three. Yes, but the, the power sonic... of three, Simon. The power of three. The sonic screwdriver doesn't three. usually doesn't you isn't no. The doctor never usually uses the sonic screwdriver to destroy stuff. Yes, but Dalek coming straight at them. They got three. Can destroy things with three apparently. So yeah. And still, they needed a way to smash through the painting back into the. Uh... Yeah. Which was very dramatic and cool. It was cool. Yeah. Oh, sorry about the Dalek. <laughs> More funny lines. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Also, I thought the uh, the Doctor scrap. There were you, there you were quite a lot. Also, a quite a lot in this episode. There were quite a lot of like clever things, like the fairs okay. being passed through the thing and. Uh, the doctor scratching the code. One day you'll just walk past later. the fez. One day you'll just walk past the fez. Never gonna happen. Probably, actually. Yeah. I want. Uh, actually, I, the I, next, the next doctor Peter Capaldi is probably gonna hate fezes. No, he's not gonna hate them. It's. He's probably just gonna go. Meh. He's probably. They should like in the in the actual episode they should have him walk past one and just a little tear rolls down his eye and he doesn't know why. <laughs> Still, uh, the Doctor writing it, scratching that thing into the wall, and then Clara being able to use the Vortex Manipulator. Nod to Captain Jack also, which is nice, because Captain Jack's cool. Wait, what? Yes, the it was Captain Jack's Vortex yeah, Manipulator. Yeah, but what was that sentence you just said? I did not understand what that sentence It was a nice nod to Captain Jack, and Captain Jack is cool. Yeah, he's okay. He's funny. Saruman! Mm -hmm. Lol. Um, Still, no, I like those clever things. Yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of clever things this episode. It's a very clever episode. Makes there's a lot of... quite a lot of everything, I think. There's quite a lot of fan Again, service. Did... There's quite a lot of doctors. There's quite I... a lot of Daleks. There's quite a lot of Saigons. Su okay, there's quite a lot of everything, I think. I know they're saving like the big monster team up because the trailer seems like there's going to be loads of monsters in it because uh, uh, the trailer of the... Um, Christmas special. I know they're saving like most of the monsters for that, but I wish they would have more Daleks and Zygons. That is it. I know if you can like have a classic one, it almost counts as two because it's we're going back to the past, man. man. I still think that um, I wish there was more. People, I think a few people probably would have complained if there had been too many Daleks, like. Hey, the Daleks weren't that big of a part of the plot. We don't need to see that to Daleks. They're only in there because they're Daleks and everybody loves Daleks. So why am I complaining? Uh, I know, but I wish there were more v other kinds of bad guys. Mainly because Daleks and Zygons in a 50th anniversary. Well, I don't want that to be it. Cyberman. Have the Cyberman in there. They well, there was, a, there was a Cyberman head. Ooh, so great! Have the have the new Cybermen in there fight the Daleks or something, and why have, have the no. Zygons team up with the humans to save the Earth that they've been warring for and stuff like that? I don't know. We forty two. I don't know. I just want more villains because if it's going to be like a big milestone, which this is, this is the longest running sci-fi show ever. Ever! Ever, which seems sad, really, but still. I wish that there were more villains in it, because, uh, or either more plot or more villains. Not neither. Instead, uh, instead they just went for fan service. I wish they were, like, I wish they were or more least, villains. Or at least some references to, uh, no, not references. I want to see villains fighting villains, heroes teaming up with villains to fight bigger villains. Star Wars Episode One confirmed. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, I do. 
Also, you did ask for a big red button. No, I didn't. I no, John Hurt asked for a big red button, so there was suddenly a big red button. What are you even talking about? Where was the big red button? Well, the, that crystal thing. That was not a big red button, that was a crystal. Well, Billy Pipes' character said you asked for a big red button, so it's a big red button. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember that bit, but... Meh. Well, you have bad memory. I don't have bad memory, I just don't remember anything with her. Also, if they... This is like the tiniest of tiny Nick picks. Um, but if the, if the, uh, the Time War is meant to have basically destroyed most of reality, why is there, like, no fighting going on on that desert planet where John Hurt was? Um, he probably, again, it's said that he went really far away from the TARDIS. He could have gone extremely far away, for all we know. Hopped she said that he walked miles, not Hopped. hundreds of miles, Well, no, he could, miles. he could, well, no, you don't need to be specific, Rim. That was a weird film. Hey, I like Pacific Rim. It was cool. I didn't say it was bad. It was really bad, man. It was Pacific Rim. So, yeah. Is that all? I think that's... I think we've covered almost everything. Uh, I think we've probably mentioned the bit where there were... Um, there were multiple Doctors. But yeah, just, well, in we, case, we, we just in case you didn't catch that... There were, basically, shots of all the Doctors. Yes, again, it did look very green screen, but I liked it. Oh, uh, it was nice. It was very And green. anyway, they were up on little screens, so... Yeah, but I wish they were less green screened. Uh, oh, we haven't talked about Tom Baker! We have, I said. Well... Tom Baker, we... uh, Tom Baker is the most confusing cameo, cameo in this thing, but yet the best cameo. The well, thing. the doctor said that it, it, at some point I episode, was I talking. It's... Well, you are no longer talking. Well, back uh, back to what I was saying. He appears as the architect of the museum at the end of it's the curator. Same thing. So, uh, at the end of the episode, where the doctor uh, has, uh, where the doctor, uh, aka Matt Smith, doctor. Has just fa uh, just let his friends go. The War Doctor and the and Tenth Doctor. The Tenth and War Doctors. What? You know what I mean. And uh, Clara goes into the TARDIS, saying that the Creator wants to meet him. An old no, she says an old man was looking for him. Yeah, the Creator of the museum, an old man. Curator. Was... Yes, Creator. Curator. That's what I'm saying. Curator, curator, as in cube. Curator, yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Technicality. Yeah, and it turns so I'm out... looking at the picture publicity images for uh, the Day of the Doctor, and why is there a tyre in the back of that place where John Hurt was? But no, he needs explosions behind him because it's a war zone and stuff like that. Tyres! No, no, the little hut where he put the moment. I have no... Well, no, that, again, it was the most desolate place he could find. So, random tyre, oh. perfect. So, yeah, and then... Oh, look who the creator is. Uh, it's... It's, it's the fourth Doctor... I didn't get it. Well, I didn't understand I why the fourth meant, Doctor was I think there. It, I think it meant to be a future incarnation of the Doctor who suddenly looks like an older version of Tom Baker. It makes no sense, but well, Tom Baker's awesome. It could have been. It could have been the drink again. He could have. He could have been drinking a drink to make himself look like Tom Baker the next time. I don't know. Maybe but yeah, just... and then he walks into the TARDIS and walks into a thing that looks a lot like a one-eyed smiley face of all the Doctors, including the War Doctor, and at the top is the First Doctor, which I can't remember the name of. Oh yeah, one-eyed smiley face, I just realised. One-eyed oh, yeah. smiley Basically, face. Basically, if you didn't understand it, because I didn't get it until just now, uh, and that's only because I've watched the episode like twice already. No, I've only watched it once. He's um, only watched it once, but I've only only watched it once, and I've got everything. So ha! <laughs> but basically, the Doctor has a little speechy thing at the end where he says that Clara asks him if he dreams, and he says yes, he does dream, and he dreams about where he is going, and apparently, where he is going next is home, which I... is Gallifrey, because we have we... a massive 
We have a shot of all the Doctors standing in front of Gallifrey. And actually, I wasn't expecting to see all the faces of the Doctors, because John Hurt and Dave Tennant kind of turned around, and I was like, right, we're just going to see their backs. But no, we turned around, and there was some... And then, if you look, if you looked right across to... If you looked at Christopher Eccleston's face and Tom Baker's face, I think these were the worst ones. They looked really... Um, they look, they looked really CGI, but you can't you no, can't. No, they're not really... CGI, uh, Simon. They're green screened with extra effects on them to make them look realistic. That's the idea. They basically did a green screen of. They basically did. No, a they green took screen. they did a green screen effect of the original uh, of some of the original episodes, and made added some like some filters to it to make them look more realistic. That it wasn't. Well, to me, Tom CGI. Baker's face, uh, Tom Baker and Christopher Eccleston's faces, as well as Paul McGann's body, but weirdly not his face, but CG. <laughs> his face no. just looked, oh my god, best face, and just like... No, no, Paul oh, McGann's yeah. face didn't look that bad, and his hair looks fine, it was just his body looked like it was really computer generated. To me, to me, they I all look... To, to me, they all look fine, but that was me. Well, that's because I was on a massive screen. And in 3D! <laughs> Whoa. 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 So I, I think that, Whoa. finally, is all we have to say on this episode. Okay, so what are we going to rate it? Uh, again, if you haven't seen the ep older episodes of this show, thumbs up, thumbs down, and thumbs middle with little... Well, I don't words. think I've given... a. I don't think that I've given a double thumbs up to anything yet, but I'm going to give this a double thumbs up just because it gives... It may... It, it, not... I think that I... <laughs> On, if this had just been a regular episode, I would have given them this a single thumbs up. But just because it it was, I think it was fitting for the 50th anniversary. I don't. It didn't let me down in any way. And even though I think it possibly could have been just a little bit better with those tiny nitpicks gone and maybe a little bit more Zygon and Dalek, but and a little bit more anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that it the was. The moon just dropped on my computer. I think it was an almost perfect 50th anniversary celebration episode. I think it was just about the right length, and that it also made just me saying, really you excited. Uh, you did a lot of double thumbs up in series five, uh, series seven. So oh, really? Um, fine, whatever. I think it was it, that or five. I can't remember. Uh, you done talking? Well, I like series five, so probably series five. Um, well, you but know, like both of them. So. Are, we, but, uh, are you done talking yet? So I can give my. No, I've not done talking. Yeah, great. But it, it, I think for once in quite a long time, it's made me very excited for the next episode and the next next year's series of Doctor Who. So I, for that reason, I'm going to give it a double thumbs up. Well, I, uh, well, this is the end of at least like series one of this big thing that we're doing. Again, we're going to carry on every uh, next season of Doctor Who and we'll probably do like a little a couple of episodes talking about special things I don't know like video games and ah <laughs> but yeah and I thought it'll be j uh, perfect if I end this ser uh, this series on something that I a word that I invented I give this episode a schmiddle is that like a thumb, um, thumbs middle pointing towards a thumbs up? Yes. I don't give it a full thumbs up or two thumbs up. One, the second thumbs up goes away because this was way too fanservice-y. I like fanservice-y things. I like a good few episodes of fanservice. But it you have to balance it. You really do need to balance it. Uh, because if you don't balance it, you're going to either... Uh, you're gonna either have no fan service, and if it's a milestone like this, you're gonna have some fan service, and you people expect it, and they love it, or too much fan service, and then there's no plot, and it's just like, Wee! look at the Dalek head, oh, look at the Cyberman head. <laughs> Actually, that would have been a good 50th anniversary, just seeing every single Doctor just run around in circles for half an hour. That would have been great, but we didn't. So, um, John Hurt as the Doctor, fantastic, um, um, David and we Tennant, already talked about this, David Tennant, again, fantastic, Matt Smith, again, fantastic, all fantastic balls, but, fantastic, uh, but because of that, and because of all the little uh, nitpicks, 
I cannot give this even a thumbs up. But it is fantastic, and I recommend... Fantastic! All, and I recommend all of you to go see it. Uh, probably fantastic! To, probably to see Night at the Doctor first, because it gives a lot of... Uh, well, not, uh, no, if you're a fan of the series... Oh, and that mini thing, The, the Fall of Arcadia, which... I didn't know. see that, so... For some reason, it's not on the BBC side, but it is on BBC's YouTube channel. But yeah, I give it a schmiddle. Yeah. Happy birthday, Doctor Who, and here's to another 50 years. Hopefully, if that... And I'm going to be 60 or something. And I'll know. be dead, probably. Yeah. What, World War 50? <laughs> World War Six will be happening by then, so. <laughs> oh, we'll um, all be dead because a, a meteor killed us all. Meteors. Uh, also, if they might not get to the fiftieth because of that whole thing, just like he could only regenerate thirteen times. Yeah, now the Gallifrey's back, they're probably just gonna give him a ton more regenerations. Also, didn't he say? Or that... River Song could have given her all, him all her excess regeneration. Also, didn't he say in one Sarah Jane episode something like five thousand and two? It's Sarah Jane. It's a spin-off. Yeah, but it counts as technically canon, so it's canon. So it's either like anyway, Happy Birthday, Doctor Who. This series is now, for the moment, over. But remember, we probably will be doing some specials in the future or the past. Again, time travel. Uh, specials! Specials! See, we did a video on the specials like yesterday, and now we're doing even more. Uh, now we'll be doing specials in this series. It's just the birth of series after series after series. Series no after series. Series after series. After series, and, after series after series. and then we'll have a spin-off series. And then that will have a spin-off series. And that will have a spin-off series. And then everything Infinite will... Infinite spin-off series. Infinite spin-off series. Anyway. So, yeah. Remember to like if you liked it and all that jazz. And remember to go check out his channel if you're watching my video. We have... And remember to go out check out his channel if you're watching my video. Please feel free to comment. Right? If you like the video, please go to my channel. you find lots more of this series. And remember... Gallifrey falls no more. Goodbye!